Wakfi Jadid uh, is a scheme that was launched by Hazrat Khalifa Masisani in uh, 1957 and the uh, objective of this scheme was twofold. The primary objective was to look after the spiritual upbringing of members of the Jamaat in rural parts of India and Pakistan. Um, so there was, a, you know, as a result of this scheme, uh, there were Muslims who were sent out to rural areas uh, to ensure that members of the Jamaat had an appropriate tarbiyat, especially where they didn't have large established mosques uh, in city centres. Uh, and the second uh, objective of the scheme was to bring the message of Islam to the Hindu population of the Indian subcontinent. He had a great vision, Hazrat Muslim Maud, on, on all aspects and he began to realise that although, as I said, you know, in the urban centers we were progressing, but in the rural areas there was this dire need. And one of the other things which uh, transpired to him was that, especially one of the areas that which he concentrated initially was the Sindh area, where the Hindu community was very destitute and very poor, and the Christians were making inroads with them. And he felt that uh, this is where Islam should take precedence. And therefore, through this scheme, by the grace and mercy of Allah, many people were converted to Ahmadiyyat uh, through this scheme in which the aspects of uh, true Islam were told to the people and they began to accept uh, Ahmadiyyat in large numbers. As a result of uh, contributions uh, that came from this, people would dedicate their time uh, on an RZ basis, uh, i.e. a temporary basis, to go out and uh, fulfill this duty. I mean, for a murabi, uh, a, a full murabi, he has to go through several years of training through Jamia Amdiya. Um, they have to uh, dedicate their entire lives to the service of the Jamaat. Uh, but my understanding uh, is that through the scheme of Waqf Jadeed, uh, you can have people that aren't uh, murabbis as such, but have gained training uh, to a basic level uh, who can go to these rural parts of India. Um, of course, subsequently, the this, uh, this, this scheme was initially just for the Indian subcontinent, but then Hazrat Khalim Fasi Rabe uh, extended it uh, to the entire world. So where, you know, these Muslims can go and effectively um, ensure that members of the Jamaat are getting appropriate uh, tarbiyat. This Mualameen uh, has now increased extensively. There are, by the grace or mercy of Allah, thousands of Mualameen. And you know, I, I come from Africa myself, and uh, some years back I was working in Uganda, and I was just amazed. You know, I had lived in Uganda, in East Africa, and at that time, there were no Mualameen, you know, sort of pre-50 50, 50 era. But now, when you go there, in any village, by the grace and mercy of Allah, you will find these Mualameen who are doing sterling work for the Jamaat in ensuring, as I said, not only the tarbiyat of the, of the members, but to carry forward the message of uh, Ahmadiyya to the corners of the world. Hazrat Khalif uh, Tumasi Khamis, Ayyadullah Ta'ala ibn Aziz, has said that with a little bit of effort, we can easily reach uh, a million uh, participants in this blessed scheme. And in fact, um, he's even mentioned the figure of 10 million is not impossible. So this scheme, from a very humble beginnings, um, has uh, grown massively. Uh, both in terms of the numbers of people who had the, have the opportunity to participate, 
but also in terms of the total monies raised and uh, the areas within which people are benefiting uh, as a direct result of this scheme. This uh, scheme requires financial sacrifices from the Jamaat, from the Jamaat members itself. And it's interesting to note that over the 50 odd years that this scheme has been running, in each year the amount of money and the amount of contributors has steadily increased. Perhaps I should not say steadily increased, but increased manifold. And today, by the grace and mercy of Allah, uh, last year, I believe that about 530,000 people uh, joined in this scheme. And, and it's not only sort of the adult members, but also children. And I'll come to that a, li a, li a little while later. And the amount of money that has been collected is three and a, over three and a half million pounds, which is a huge amount for this scheme, which started with, I believe, the first contributors paid about six rupees, you know, which <laughs> when you translate it in today's money is uh, perhaps uh, less, than a, uh, less than a few pennies. But that's what it started off as. Uh, now, in, in this regard, the money which has been utilized is we must not think that it only comes say from Europe or, or America. But in fact, in the last few years, we have se seen uh, a great improvement in the amount of money which the Africans and the Indian people themselves give towards the scheme. And that is how things become successful, is that the, when the poorest themselves are contributing. You know, in, uh, in the world today, uh, when we look at uh, Africa in particular, and also India, they are the ones who actually contribute uh, quite uh, extensively. Uh, there's an example uh, given uh, once that you know the, that someone uh, that someone who gives only, uh, let us say, a person, a poor person, gives uh, a few pennies. Uh, while he has only got a few pounds perhaps to give. But the percentage he gives is so extensive uh, th in, and therefore the blessing that he gets is also extensive as well. And this is how Allah has arranged that we find even with Ahmadis uh, in Africa and India. Although sometimes they don't even know what they're going to have for their next meal, by the grace and mercy of Allah, they are contributing so generously and it is this really which determines uh, the success of Ahmadiyyat. In Islam, there is a great emphasis on financial sacrifice. You know, um, one of our five pillars of Islam is paying zakat. Uh, there's a great emphasis uh, on giving sadqa. Um, and even within the Jamaat, we, we pay our chandaam. The other chandas are, you know, compulsory and only on your income. This is one where, you know, you don't have to rely on income. You know, you can get it out of your pocket money. The amount of financial sacrifice that is demanded from us in today's day and age is completely insignificant when you look back at the times of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, everyone's heard the, the story of Hazrat Abu Bakr basically bringing everything from his house and giving it for the cause of Islam. Only leaving, only leaving the name of Allah in his house. Uh, Hazrat uh, Umar uh, also is quite, quite, quite often quoted in this story, who was uh, far wealthier than uh, Hazrat Abu Bakr, and he brought half his wealth. So I don't think anybody in today's age is asked to give up half their possessions uh, for the cause of Allah. Um, it's relatively... Um, you know, minor sacrifices which are demanded in today's day and age, but uh, the blessings are immense. The financial sacrifice is very, very important for us to understand, and we give, you know, as much as we can afford. Now, as you said, well, what happens with this money? By the grace and mercy of Allah, uh, you know, once the money has been collected, uh, you know, we have by, uh, set up uh, new centers now uh, in Africa in Asia, in India, and other places, you know, where uh, Molameen, uh, you know, uh, colleges for the Molameen have been set up, so that money goes in running those uh, uh, particular schools. 
uh, and then from that you know many molamine come out and as I told you that now it runs in hundred thousands not even thousands hundred thousands so they are uh, helped through this scheme so the molamine are doing that sterling job where they go into the rural areas into the villages and I have seen some of them you know I mentioned when I was uh, in Uganda they live in uh, very remote areas they live in mud huts and villages whatever the poor people can afford you know you must remember that you are going to the very poorest of people and they live there with them and you know uh, become part of them and this is how by the grace and mercy of Allah the message of uh, Ahmadiyyat spreads and also it gives uh, the new entrance to Ahmadiyyat hope that you know here we have people who are reasonably educated as compared to them you know who come to the, uh, come to them live with them and share their sorrows and their hopes as well and it is this greatness in, in the Mualameen which I believe you know which then generates this uh, great uh, tarbiyat and uh, tabli activities in the Jamaat. There's always been a great emphasis uh, laid upon participation in this scheme in particular uh, by children. Uh, in fact, uh, Hazrat Khalif Namasi Salis uh, established some honorary titles uh, for the children of the Jamaat that contribute to this scheme. And they were uh, young Mujahid, uh, Mujahid Safedom, and Mujahid Safi Awal. And a child could achieve one of these honorary titles uh, depending upon the amount that they contributed. So this really, uh, you know, started a great spirit amongst the children of the Jamaat to participate in this blessed scheme. And we're seeing the fruits of that today, to be honest. Uh, for instance, if I was to take a, a Jamaat like Pakistan, uh, which, mashallah, uh, has had the number one spot uh, in total contributions for Vakf Jadid for many years now. Um, it's staggering when you think that 50% of total contributions by the Jamaat in Pakistan are from, are from children alone. And that's a phenomenal figure when you think about it is that, mashallah, not only is the country the largest contributor in the world, so it's a significant amount of money that they contribute. I mean, Relatively speaking, people in the United States or here in the United Kingdom or indeed in Europe, they have much stronger currencies. Uh, generally, people tend to be more affluent. Um, and even considering that, albeit, you know, it's, it's fair to say that the Ajumat is larger in Pakistan, but nonetheless, it's, it's, it's a big contribution. And for half of that to come from children, I think is amazing. And... Um, it's real heartwarming that actually the future of our Jamaat is in the hands of children like these uh, who are making such, a, uh, such a, an immense sacrifice. One of the prophecies of the promised Messiah al-Islam was that Ahmadiyyat would reach the corners of the world. And as I mentioned earlier, Hazrat Muslim Aud saw that to get this me message to the corner of the world, we had to go to the most remotest and the most rural of areas. And now we see that dream being fulfilled. Because truly, Ahmadiyyat has reached the corners of the world through this great scheme. And not only has it reached to the corners of the world, but by doing so, it has brought truth, honesty, integrity to, a nation, to nations who were bereft of that. And the true message of the Holy Prophet وسلم, is being fulfilled that truth and uh, honesty and true Islam will come again through the Messiah and that indeed is being fulfilled by this great scheme. <laughs>